How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here again. This time we're going to take a look at characteristics of gases and pressure. So our objectives will be to describe the properties of gases, define what pressure is, and convert between the various units that are used for pressure, including atmosphere, uh, millimeters of mercury, uh, tor, pascal, and kilopascal. All right, so let's talk about phases, solids. You know, you maybe think of an ice cube because that's a good example of a solid. The uh, particle diagrams, what it's going to look like if you look at the individual molecules and the particles, it kind of looks like they're all just kind of neatly packed together, forming a nice kind of crystal structure. So it has a definite shape, has a definite volume. The molecules and the atoms are going to kind of vibrate in place. They're not going to flow past each other. They're going to kind of just vibrate in place. And they're incompressible, meaning that if you were to push down on this solid, it's going to keep its volume. It's not going to change its volume. Liquids, you know, like liquid water, stuff you drink, uh, particles, a little more spread out. They will take the shape of their container because they're liquids. Uh, the particles can flow past each other, but they do have a definite volume and they're incompressible, meaning that if you actually try to like compress the water, it's going to not change volume. All right. And then gases, a little different, like steam. If you ever made some tea, boiling water, you can see the water vapor coming out. Uh, the gas particles really spread out and they take the shape of whatever container they're in. Um, they take the volume of whatever container they're in and they can flow past each other and they're compressible. Meaning that if I were to actually like, hey, maybe this wall moves and I can push in on it, it's actually going to move in because there's all this empty space. The particles can get closer together. They will be compressible. So some more characteristics of gases. The particles are really far apart and they're really small compared to the volume of the container. The molecules only take up about 0.1% of the whole volume. So you'll often see pictures that look like this showing that, hey, there's a whole lot of space in between them. But in reality, there's even more space in between them. Those particles are significantly smaller than what you see in most particle diagrams. Mixtures of gases are homogeneous, meaning that if you take two gases and you mix them together, they're gonna to mix and form homogeneous mixtures. They're gonna be the same throughout. So if I had some argon, some helium, and I mixed them together, I'm gonna to get a nice, even, homogeneous mixture. The air that you're breathing right now is a homogeneous mixture of different gases. We got nitrogen, that's like 78% of it-ish. Oxygen's roughly 21% of it, and then there's 1% of a bunch of other gases that make up the rest of the air that you're breathing right now. Uh, and it's got the same composition air. The air that I'm breathing is the same as the air that you're breathing. It's 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% other stuff. Same all over. And this is special for gases. It's not like this in other phases. So if you have solids or liquids and you mix them together, they won't always form a homogeneous mixture the way the gases do. So just think of what happens when you mix oil and water, right? They're going to separate. They don't form this homogeneous mixture. Even if you shake it up, if you leave it there, eventually they will separate again. All right, so pressure. Pressure is always just a force over a particular area. So gas particles form pressure because they move chaotically and they bump into things. They bump into the other gas particles and they also bump into the side, the container walls, right? Whatever you got it in, the gas particles are bumping against it, right? They're moving around chaotically in straight lines till they hit something. And when they bump into the container walls, that's what is causing the pressure inside of that container. So let's talk about atmospheric pressure. So we know that gravity pulls down on all matter, and this includes gas particles. You know, you might think of them as just kind of floating about, but gravity's still pulling down on them as well. So if you had a container and you removed all the gas from inside of the bottle, that's gonna collapse the bottle. Why is the bottle collapsing? It's because the pressure on the outside of the bottle is pushing in on it. Um, the average force of the atmosphere pushing down on us at the surface, we call atmospheric pressure or one atmosphere of pressure. Cause like if we're down here and we're, you know, smiling cause we're happy, we have one whole atmosphere of air above us that gravity is pulling down and pushing on us. And you know, that's, that's what's up. So visualization of pressure. So we have one atmosphere. Right, so what is that equivalent to? It's equivalent to 14.7 pounds per square inch. So a little visualization of that. To, for example, if you had like a 15 pound weight, maybe you're doing some curls, you know, and you put that entire weight on one square inch, that is the equivalent to the amount of pressure from the air that's above you. You know, you walk outside, take a look up, there's a whole lot of sky out there pushing down on you, 14.7 pounds for every square inch. Another equivalent is if you're into bowling, 
uh, a 10 pound bowling ball, a bowling ball uh, on, uh, you know, an American quarter is roughly the same amount of pressure, right? Uh, one atmosphere is also, another unit is the kilopascal or KPA. So one atmosphere is equivalent to 101.325 kilopascals. So one pascal is a newton of force divided by a square meter. The equivalent for one pascal is roughly a glass of water spread over an entire single bed. So one pascal, not a whole lot of pressure maybe, but when you talk about one atmosphere being 101.325 kilopascal, thousand pascals, it's equivalent to having like three elephants on that very same bed. So kind of a lot of pressure. Another unit of measure that we use is millimeters of mercury, AKA TOR. So this comes from using like a barometer. So in this mercury barometer, this is just a vacuum. There is nothing in there um, at all, right? That's not gas, it's just empty. And the mercury, gravity's pulling it down, but we also have down here, the atmospheric pressure pushing back on that liquid mercury. So eventually we get this equilibrium state and we go, all right, well, if we know how tall that column of mercury is, that's going to tell us about how much pressure is pushing down on it. So one atmosphere of pressure is equivalent to a uh, column of mercury that is 760 millimeters tall. Are converting between pressures. So we have all these different units. We know that one atmosphere is 14.7 pounds per square inch. We know that's 760 millimeters of mercury. That's 760 tor. And that's 101.325 kilopascals. So whenever we're given one unit and we got to convert to another, we want to remind ourselves of this. So for example, how many tor is equivalent to 1.23 atmospheres? Well, all right, if we're starting with 1.23 atmospheres, we want to figure out what conversion factor we're going to need to use. Well, if I'm trying to cancel out atmospheres, I want to put atmospheres on the bottom. If I'm trying to get TOR, I want to put TOR on top. So let me just look at these numbers. Well, I know that one atmosphere is equivalent to 760 TOR. So when I do this math, the atmospheres will cancel out and the number that I get is 934.8 TOR. Another example, how many kilopascals are in 20.3 pounds per square inch? So again, start, hey, I got 20.3 pounds per square inch. Well, let me figure out my conversion factor. If I'm trying to cancel out pounds per square inch, I'm gonna have to put that on the bottom and I'm trying to get kilopascals. So I put that on top and I look at my numbers and I know that 14.7 pounds per square inch is equivalent to 101.325. Kilopascal, so when I plug and chug, the pounds per square inch will cancel out, and the number I get is 139.925 kilopascals. All right, so not too bad. So summarize, can you describe the properties of gases? Can you define what pressure is, and can you convert between the various units that are used, including atmospheres, millimeters of mercury, tor, pascal, and kilopascal? I hope so, I hope you found it helpful. See you in class, goodbye. Okay,